Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for March the 30th. I want to just go through some quotes here and talk a little bit about the banking industry from a fundamental and a technical perspective. But <clears throat> Peter Lynch said, as I look back on it now, it's obvious that studying history and philosophy was much better preparation for the stock market than, say, studying statistics. I think having history and philosophy readings kind of help you develop your instincts where you can go back over years and study great money managers of the past and and basically develop a kind of a skill of understanding these things. Now this is a philosopher Carl Jung but he was also a psychiatrist and uh, said man needs difficulties they are necessary for health. You know if you really think about the stock market <clears throat> if it went up all the time and it never went down it wouldn't work because everybody would just, you know, it, it, it's just not possible. It's impossible. So there's going to be difficulties. And uh, John Bogle said, if you have trouble imagining a 20% loss in the stock market, you shouldn't be in stocks because it's going to happen. Bear markets are going to happen. I've been through many bear markets, survived them all, but it is a reality that is important. Now, when you're managing your portfolio, William O'Neill says, my philosophy is that all stocks are bad. There are no good stocks unless they go up in price. If they go down instead, you have to cut your losses fast. Letting losses run is the most serious mistake made by most investors. So in other words, he generally cuts everything uh, with a small loss of 7 to 8%. So if you think about it, if you have, let's say you have 5% of your portfolio in a stock, it's dropping. Obviously, it's a bad stock. Something's wrong. You're, you're, you've made a mistake. So if you, let's say you cut your loss at 8% and you've got 5% of your portfolio in it. Well, that's four-tenths of 1%. So you can survive that and you know, retain a majority of your portfolio to go get that four-tenths of 1% back. It just takes time. Now, the good news for me is <clears throat> I'm starting to feel like I'm seeing the light of the uh, end of the bear market. I, I really feel that my, my work is telling me that things are starting to turn more positive, which has a lot to do with interest rates. But let's take a minute and just look at a bank. This is a bank. Now, now realize with banks, you have, to, you have to separate banks from brokerage firms. Now, brokerage firms are insured by SIPC, which is a uh, insurance against fraud of a brokerage account. Now, a brokerage account your assets are segregated in that account. They do not commingle your money or your assets with other people. Like at a bank, your deposits are commingled, and then the bank either lends money or invests the money. So this is a portfolio of a bank that I looked at. And you can see what the problem is here. They've got a majority of their investment portfolio. Now, this, this is a custodial bank. This is not a bank that necessarily lends money. You don't see you know, too much lending going on here. It's mainly investing in securities. Now, the problem with this particular bank is this pool of investments is currently yielding about 2%. So when you start realizing that Treasury bills, and in fact, um, we have moved all of our cash out of a uh, bank and gone into uh, a 30-year Treasury note, which we were able to get about 4.3%. So we're, we're dealing directly with the Treasury. Whereas with this, with a bank like this, if they're paying 2% and I can go get 4% in a Treasury, does that mean that a lot of people are going to be doing that and really deplete the deposits of the bank, just like we saw in California with SVB? It is a concern. So the, the banks are really in a very tough predicament here. Now, if we look at uh, this particular graph, which is more of a technical look, I went back and just took the month of March, which ends today. That's a 30% drop in one month. And this is the regional banks, a 30% drop. And then look at the selling volume that came in. I mean, I, I go back to 2019 on this, and we've never seen selling volume of this magnitude and a 30% drop. It's just uh, real eye-opening. So. You know, be aware of this. Uh, I would say possibly that it, it that your money is almost safer in a brokerage account than it would be at a bank. But you need to make sure you stay within the two hundred fifty thousand dollars limits. Now, 
I said earlier that I thought I started to see the light. I think I'm seeing some light here. Now, this particular indicator is one that we use. It's a leading indicator now, but it is secondary to our trend following indicators. But it's, I think it's important. And what we're doing here is we're taking that five-year treasury note and we're taking the yield on it. Now, we're using 125 days. So why 125 days? Well, that's six months of trading. That's 125 trading days. So that's roughly six months. We think the Fed looks out six months is basically the theory here. Now, when interest rates you know, drop, stocks go up. When interest rates go up, stocks go down. So you can see here back in uh, 2020, this particular indicator with the rate of change goes from under zero to above zero, that is a signal that the mark, this indicator is discounting that the Federal Reserve is gonna start raising interest rates. And you know, sure enough, that's what's happened. Now here recently, we dropped below zero. So that is a signal that's saying to us, the Fed may be done and they actually might start cutting interest rates. So remember this, this particular period here. This would have told you it's time to get defensive. It's time to protect my assets. Now, this is the aggression index. This is another important indicator. Again, a leading indicator. Secondary, but leading. We're comparing a very simple ratio of technology stocks to consumer staples. Now, the thinking on this is that if the large funds start moving money out of growth stocks and technology stocks into toilet paper stocks and toothpaste stocks, it's a way, the, the, the market is telling you that the, these big funds are getting defensive. So like I said on the, um, the power index, which was the last in indicator we looked at, it gave a negative reading right here in uh, October, November of 20. However, we got a sell signal on this particular indicator in around March or February, March of 21. So then you had a head fake here, but what was important was even after, you know, during that head fake, you were still getting these, you were still in negative territory here. So this would have helped you, you know, avoid the head fake. In other words, we, we, we gave a sell signal, turned right around, gave a buy signal, but the other indicator would have said, hey, wait a minute, just sit tight, you know, but then look at this, you know, catastrophic drop. So this is what a growth stock cycle looks like. We started buying Tesla back in October of 19 and we sold Tesla here. So Tesla went from approximately $35 a share here to over roughly 400 here. So it went up about tenfold. And we sold, which created a tax liability, but the stock dropped all the way down to 100 down here. So it's, it's, it's an interesting indicator. Now, just want to talk about the market a little bit, that we're still not seeing a lot of new highs. That's, we need to see new highs. So that means the buyers are coming in. However, we are holding above the 200-day on the S&P, and we're holding above the 200-day on the NASDAQ, which is an important moving average and is, like I say, I might be seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. You can see here on our three economic indicators, interest rates actually broke below that 200-day briefly, kind of bounced back above it again. But interest rates really do look like they're, they're going into a downtrend, which is what we want. Oil, oil is still in a downtrend. Financial stocks are still in a downtrend, but somewhat improving. <clears throat> so let's talk about a stock. We'll take a look at it fundamentally and technically. Now, right here in you know February, we got what we call a gap up buy signal. It's 110 uh, million shares that traded that day. Stock gapped up, okay? Then we're starting to see you know consolidation. So what'll happen is you'll get a gap up, then you'll get consolidation. Actually, even a little bit of a pullback in the consolidation. But then, boom, we get another gap up. And now we're doing the consolidation again. So if this stock continues to gap up or stay in an uptrend, that's very positive. Now, NVIDIA has announced that they're going to be very involved in artificial intelligence. I'm hearing that could be potentially a $14 trillion industry. So it's, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. So just kind of look at how they are now. They're, they're, they're quite profitable. Their, uh, their profit margin is exceptional. Return on equity is good. They have positive cash flow of over, you know, over $4 billion positive cash flow. However, the negatives here was last quarter, their revenues actually dropped 
and their earnings actually drop. So the stock, that's what really caused the stock to pull back. But being that they're making moves into artificial intelligence, it's why that stock's breaking out. They got $26 billion in revenue. Now, one thing to mention about this company, it's a over $600 billion market cap. So it's, it's, it's a big one. Now, cash is $13 billion. Current ratio, 3.5 to 1. They do have some debt, but they also have a lot of cash, and they have a high current ratio. So this is a very solid company. It's just the, the, the speculation is, are they going to get involved in a $14 trillion industry? Now, the founder of the company, and I will say founder because, you know, I always like to invest in companies where the founder is still the CEO. I just think that's a good thing. He's a very educated guy, uh, Jensen Wang. He's the founder. He's an inventor. He's like a Steve Jobs. You know, we want inventors. That, that, that's a good thing because they're always bringing on new products, new services. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much.